In this problem, we're told that we have set an IV pump at a rate of 50 mLs per hour. However, the electricity is going off and we're not gonna be able to use the pump to infuse this medication, this NS. And so we need to grab what's called a manual set or gravity set to complete this infusion. So we need to convert the milliliter per hour rate into drops per minute. Now, before I write down anything, I just wanna to try to make sense of all the information that I'm given. I see here that I'm working with a 100 ml bag, and here's the pump that was working, and now it's not working. And if I interpret the information here, VTBI, that's the volume that was to be infused, which was 100. Looks like this was gonna run for two hours, which means if 100 mLs are running for two hours, over two hours, 100 divided by two, this was going to be running so that the patient received 50 mLs per hour. So that is the rate that I need to start with. When we use dimensional analysis, we always start with what it is we wanna convert, what we wanna change. So I have 50 mLs over one hour. At the end of my dimensional analysis, what I wanna convert this to is drops over minute. So recall, we like to make a plan of how we're gonna do this. And I see here the denominator from hours into minutes, that's great, that's a conversion that I know. So I'm, I'm gonna be able to use my understanding of time conversions to turn hours into minutes. MLs into drops. Now that's something that I have to think about for a second. I know ML is a measure of volume and drops are also a measure of volume. However, this is not a conversion to memorize. On our conversions protocol document, you will see there are a lot of things that relate to milliliters in the volume section. Milliliters to ounces, milliliters to liters, milliliters to tablespoons, teaspoons, but there's no milliliters to drops. And that's because it all depends on the tubing that we're using for our infusion. And what I see here, this is the tubing that I'm using to make this infusion. So I'm gonna connect the tube here. I'm not a nurse, I don't know the fancy words, but I'm gonna put this part into the bag and then all the liquid is gonna drip out into this chamber. And this tubing is actually going to calibrate and has a calibration where it will break up each milliliter into a certain size drop. And that has to be given to us. This tubing that's given to us is calibrated so that each ml gives us 15 drops. So this is our conversion between milliliters and drops. So I do have that conversion, but it's not one that I have memorized because it has to be given to me. This is saying there are, and maybe I'll make a little note here, there are 15 drops that make up one milliliter. So every 15 drops that falls, one, two, three, four, five, six, every 15 milliliters, or every 15 drops that fall will make up one milliliter. So that's gonna be my conversion. So let's go ahead and set up this dimensional analysis. I have 50 mLs over one hour. I made a plan where I'm gonna first turn the hours into minutes, which might look a little different. Sometimes we focus on the numerator first, but because dimensional analysis is a pretty fluid procedure, pretty flexible, we don't have to start with the numerator. We can work with the hours first. I know one hour is 60 minutes. If I were to stop right now, I would have the number of milliliters per minute, which is not quite what I want, but I do have minutes. So I'm gonna circle that to indicate I don't wanna do anything else with that minute. Now, I could stop here, but dimensional analysis allows me to continue. So we have multiplication. We're always multiplying with dimensional analysis. And I want to cancel out milliliters. I, I just did this part of my plan. My next part was to turn the milliliters into drops. So if I want to cancel out milliliters, which is in the numerator, I'm going to need milliliters in the denominator of my conversion factor. And I want to go from milliliters to drops. According to the packaging, there are 15 drops for every milliliter. So I see now if I multiply by one over 60, 
and then I multiply by 15 over 1, I'm going to have my drops per minute. So let's go ahead and multiply the numerators. You should get 750 all over 60, which when we do that in our calculator, we should get 12.5. This is drops per minute. Now, in a clinical context, we would actually have to set this with our eyes. We would have to count the number of drops every minute. So we would have to count this. So we would always, and we will, when we get to infusions, we were going to round this to the nearest whole number because we're not gonna have a half of a drop. So that means we would have to set this infusion to 13 drops per minute. 